Okay, I wanted to do a quick update here um, of some stuff I've been working on. It looks similar, but um, now I've got some shading. And uh, let's see, what have I been working on? So um, there's a lot of actual internal changes. Um, you can't see them, but it's actually a ton of, of stuff that I've been added to it. Um, the, ma the major change is the heap has been largely rewritten. Um, the reason was is before it wasn't really thread safe. I had some kind of thread safe features in there and it wasn't thread safe because I was doing most of my threaded code. I had like separate heat uh, sections in it. So each like um, I have a thread pool and then each pool, each thread in the thread pool at its home heap. I still kind of have that. But what I found is um, that was the slowest part of the code, generating the fractal functions, generating all the values. Um, so once I, f uh, as I move around, once I find uh, where the data is, then I actually have to build the, um, the actual voxel so I can build the mesh data. So um, what was happening is I sped the, um, generation up so much that the, the next slowest part of the code became significant. So uh, what I decided to do um, was go ahead and put like, make the heap like fully thread safe, add a bunch of features to it. So now you can create objects which, um, like the reference count for instance is atomic, so it doesn't get mixed up and so forth. So you have an option, you can still create non-thread safe objects depending on what you want to do with them. They're, they might be a little faster. But um, for uh, the voxels, like the wall, the, for instance, like the walls of the voxels, um, so they're shared between voxels. So if I'm building a voxel and I'm building another one right next to each other, it could ask the wall to, to suddenly subdivide. And if that happens at the same time, it would crash it. So walls and edges now have mutexes in them so they can be, uh, so it protects it from having any kind of conflict. So even though probably building the voxel are a little bit slower, since I'm doing it with threads, it becomes several times faster. So I, now I can have several threads working on the build process. So um, that speeds up the whole thing kind of significantly. Um, so anyway, that works. And uh, as you can see, I've got some shading in here. And this is, um, this is actually uh, 4D noise shading. Um, so it's a planet, so you're thinking, why do you need 4D? Um, the reason I'm using 4D here is that I wanted to do some sort of like horizontal striations just for now, you know. It's not very detailed shading right now. I wanna put some more details in it and, and, and add it so it uh, looks a little better. It's kind of crude shading, but um, with the fourth dimension, I use altitude. So I can compress the fourth dimension and it basically turns all these little bubbles of kind of things that you get with, with uh, noise into lines. So it, it looks like it has kind of horizontal striations, but it's not like a fixed line. It kind of fade in and fade out in places and so forth. So it gives you this, this sort of effect. So that's kind of what I was going after, but I'll, I'll do other things later. But um, again, it's it's uh, it's noise shading, so um, you don't have to worry about like it's a planet, so you don't have to worry about uh, this trilinear stuff or anything else. It just shades it. Um, one thing I did have to do was because it's so big, um, the noise function has to be um, tiled. So um, I dicked around with that for a while, and I decided to introduce like right at the beginning of it, I do the the tiling with uh, double precision, but it's a very small part of the actual noise function. So um, even though double precision is supposed to be slower on the GPU, it actually doesn't really make much difference. So now I can kind of shade across this whole planet with pretty detailed noise if I want to, and I won't have to worry about any kind of um, problems with it uh, breaking and the, um, like lines in the noise where it's where there's a discontinuity and stuff like that. So um, anyway, that works pretty well. And as you can see, there's a sun going around. Where's the sun? Probably coming out somewhere over here. 
can't remember what kind of movie movie I am on this planet. Well, somewhere, if I look for it, there's a sun, which I'm having a hard time finding. I should look for it. It's the way the light is coming. So it doesn't have shadows yet, so that's why. Oh, uh, there's, jeez, there's a sun. So it's going across the sky, and uh, looks like I have to stick to some of the thrust and pulling, thrust and pulling here. And there it goes down. It's going to go behind the horizon, and there it goes. So um, this is the sun. I I think back from my second video or something. It's the same one. I haven't really changed it. Um, so. Basically, uh, I, I added a, what I call a mech loop or a astro mechanics loop that um, it's a separate thread and it runs like all the planets and stuff. When I have more planets, there, there'll be more of them and I'll have moons and stuff. So uh, that, that basically, um, this is just a circular orbit. I have an elliptical orbit, which uses a Kepler equation. But uh, right now I'm just kind of testing stuff. So I'm um, doing using the simple circular orbit. Um, so that, that seems to be working okay. Um, one thing I, I, problem I had was when you, um, when you put stuff like way out in the distance, you're going to, you're going to get depth, uh, depth problems with the depth buffer because it's only like 32 bits. So the way I solve that is, um, I don't, I took like the, uh, those equations of depth out of the matrix. Usually you put them in like what is it, world, uh, view, and uh, I forget what they call the last one. Anyway, it's all everything goes in in one one matrix, um, and I, I ripped that part that does the depth um, compression out of the matrix, and I just did like divide by power of two to put it in the range it r requires, and that way it, it's um, it distributes like the uh, the numbers and the depth field a little better. What I what I prefer and I don't get these like stuff that gets clipped out at the uh, at, at uh, long distances so that this uh, the Sun here is actually I think it's like half a million kilometers away and it still works and that's mainly because the LOD is um, makes it so that things aren't too close to each other at distance so this is uh, I use this sort of algorithm in my shaders everywhere and it seems to be working pretty well I don't see too much Z fighting or any Z fighting at all so um, that's how that works um, you can still see here's the uh, here's the mesh uh, also I completely redid the chunk mesh transitions I think I, I mentioned it last time that I didn't quite like the way they were working so what I came up with is a much much simpler algorithm what it does is it uh, tessellates the borders of the voxels so if it, if um, when you have like two uh, a voxel next to one that's like um, one level more refined, it'll it'll tessellate things so that there's no like split edges. The edges of the voxels aren't split, so it'll create like little triangles on some of the edges. And then it kind of does um, what uh, the, I mean. In general, this is kind of like marching cubes, but for those voxels, I uh, use. Um, surface nets kind of algorithm. It's kind of a hybrid between surface nets and, um, and marching cubes. So that does the transition a lot easier. Like some people use, uh, what is it called? Um, this other algorithm, which like tessellates the whole voxel and stuff. And I found that's like way too complex. And I was doing a similar thing and it was just like way too complex. And this is so much simpler to do and it's, it's faster. It can create, um, uh, non-manifold geometry but what I just do is I break that up so it becomes manifold again so there's really no disadvantage to it as far as I know um, so it's working pretty well now that's solved um, for the shading I had to do I think I used like a like what are they call this function Mexican hat function or a Gaussian function to smooth out the shading a little bit um, so turn it back on so there it is and um, there you go so I guess that's about it um, I still want to I still haven't done the well I still haven't debugged the physics the codes in there so I'll 
going to try to get that in next. I want to convert this to um, DirectX 12 from DirectX 11. So uh, you can see like the light is actually attached to the sun. So as it goes around the head, but there is no shading, but it does change as the sun goes around. So it's kind of cool, I guess. Um, so there you go. Anyway, so that's it for now. Nice short update and um, see you in the next video if you're still interested. Bye.